Hello, Captains, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Star Trek Online. So, with the introduction of Season 12 recently, we had some new STFs drop. Two new STFs and one battle zone. We've got Gravity Kills, and then we've got the Zenkethi Front. Those are two new STFs. They have Normal, Advanced, and Elite versions. Then we have the Zenkethi Battle Zone, which is a completely different thing you have to fly to in the Alpha Quadrant to get to. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to start my look at the new STFs. And at this point, I have already played both of the new STFs. I played Gravity Kills and the Zenkethi Front. I played them on normal and I pugged them. Reason being, I have to figure out how to play them, of course. And I recommend you do that. Don't just go jumping into an advanced or elite STF without knowing how to play it. You have to first learn all the tactics. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today is uh, these STFs. I'm going to start with gravity kills. Uh, that's the first one I'm going to do today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record a playthrough of it. I'm going to pug it in normal. Now in the future, I will have pre -made, um, a pre-made group doing advanced and elite version, but that will be in the future after I get to uh, play those a little bit more and become a little bit more experienced with them. But for right now, I'm going to play the normal version first and I'm just going to pug it because I'm going to show you that it actually is possible to do in a pug, well, at least as long as people know what they're doing. Uh, in fact, I just did a pug. I've only done it twice, by the way. I just want to reiterate that. I've only played this Gravity Kills twice. So this will be the third time I play it. So I haven't really played it a lot. But in those two times that I played it, I have got the tactics down quite easily. It's not a tough STF. It's just a matter of doing the right things in the right order. And if you can do that, you can be successful in this STF. Now, I actually just did it with a three-man pug team in this last run I did. We, of course, it started with five players, but two of them left early in the STF, and we were just left with three people. Yet, me and two other guys were able to complete the STF with no problem. And it, again, it's just a matter of doing the right things, and you will be successful in it. If you do the wrong things, it will take you a very long time to complete, and be a very big pain in the butt. Um, but the deal is, I'm gonna tell you the tactics first before we get into the STF, because once I get into it, I'm not gonna be able to talk much because I wanna concentrate on it. So here's the deal, here's how you play Gravity Kills. This is really quite simple. There are three stations being gravity anchored near a black hole. These are uh, these Nkethi uh, stations, of course. The There are these hawking particles that are around them. All you simply have to do is drag these particles, you have to go capture them, and then drag them to the Jupiter, which is a ship that's sitting outside those stations, pretty far away. You have to get to it and deliver those particles. When you deliver enough particles to the Jupiter, it fires on one of the stations and the shields go down. Then all you have to do is destroy the, gr the gravatic anchors that's holding the stations in place, and then the station will get sucked into the black hole. That's it. You do that re rinse and repeat three times. And then at the very end, you come upon a last battle group, and that is, has a dreadnought in it. Um, there is a particular order for taking out ships that works very well in that battle. You want to start with the smallest ship and then work your way up to the dreadnought. Don't start just attacking the dreadnought. You will you will take a not fail. I mean you will you will fail. You will take a very long time to complete. Because what ends up happening is you've got ships that buff other ships. The Zenkethi ships buff other ships. You've got cruisers that buff battleships, battleships that buff dreadnought. So what ends up happening is if you try to start at the top, uh, you're not going to succeed because all those lower ships are just buffing those other ships. So first take out the frigates. Those are the real small ones. Those are easy to take out. Then concentrate on all the cruisers. Take out every single cruiser first. The cruisers buff the battleships. If you just start take, trying to take out the battleships, you won't do very well. So take out the cruisers, because those are buffing the battleships with shields. And then you take out the battleships after the cruisers are gone, because the battleships are buffing the dreadnought. So then you take out all the battleships, 
and then all you're left with is the Dreadnought, and he's very easy to take down. But he's only easy to take down once the cruisers and battleships are gone. So don't just go all out trying to take out the Dreadnought. If you go start at the very top, it will not work very well for you. So start at the bottom and work your way up in terms of ship size. Um, next is things you can do that would screw up the SDF or make it last a long time, and that is to spend a lot of time trying to battle the groups of ships. If if there are several people that are off battling, you know, these big groups of ships that are there in the STF and not moving particles around to the Jupiter, then it's going to take you a very long time to complete this STF because those ships spawn infinitely. You can defeat a group of them, sure, but another group's just going to respawn and they're going to keep respawning infinitely. There's an infinite amount of Zenkethi ships that will spawn in this STF. <laughs> so don't try to take out all the groups. You will fail. <laughs> what you need to do is ignore the groups. Ignore ships. And just go for those hawking particles and get them to the uh, Jupiter. Now the ships you do want to attack, because there is an optional associated with this, is the ships around the Jupiter. There are ships that will attack the Jupiter. If you can take those ships out, that will help. They also keep respawning. But there's an optional that if you can keep the hull strength higher on the Jupiter, you get more marks and so forth and so on. And I'm imagining in the Elite version, it's probably required or something like that. So what I recommend, how I would set this up if I were a team, is I would put one person to protect the Jupiter, one person that sits there and heals the Jupiter and takes care of the ships that will attack the Jupiter, okay, on each station. It moves from each station to each station. Take one ship, do that. And the rest of you guys just go pull hawking particles and bring them to the Jupiter, ignoring all the ships around you. Just totally ignoring all the ships around you. Bring those particles to the ship as fast as you can, because once it's filled up with particles, it will then fire on the station, the shield will go down, and then you can take out the grav anchors, and the station goes to the black hole. And then you just do that two more times, and then you get to the final dreadnought battle. It actually goes pretty quickly if you do it like that. It can go really quickly. Or it can take you a very long time if you want to start, a, you know, trying to take out all the ships. That's just not the way to do it. Now this one really does benefit with fast engines. Uh, especially moving those hawking particles from near the black hole to the Jupiter having a lot of engine power, very important, or a buff at least, a battery that can enhance your engine power or emergency power to engines or something like that. Anything that can buff your engine power and give you more engine power and maneuverability is actually very beneficial in this STF. So it's not so much about firepower in this STF until you get to the last battle group. It's really so much about just running, running those particles back and forth and doing that until you can get uh, to the final, the final thing, the final showdown. Um, so that's why I see now that some of these new um, sets, Lucari sets or whatever that they've been introducing, buff engine power and maneuverability and flight speed and that sort of thing. I can see that now because it is beneficial in this particular FTF, STF for sure to have that. So when I go into this STF, you're going to see me enable engine power to max. And usually I do weapon power to max. Um, but after you take out that first picket group that you have to take out, which I'll go ahead and leave my weapon to max for that. After that, I'm going to switch over to engine power because that's going to be more important for me than weapon power while I drag those particles to the Jupiter. Then after all that's done and I start attacking ships, you know, especially that final battle, I'll go back to weapon power. So you kind of want to be aware of that. Engine power will be important. Also, there's a huge drag on your ship because of the black hole. So having a high engine power will help you maneuver out of that better. And uh, you, you want to use evasive maneuvers a lot in this STF. That's really going to help you get those pa hawking particles once you have them captured. It's going to help you move that particle from the station to the Jupiter quickly. Otherwise, you're, when you're near the stations, the, gra the gravity well has such a hold on your ship, you actually are only moving extremely slowly. So that's where engine power and evasive maneuvers is really going to help you, is to get away from the area around the stations. 
because the uh, pull of that gravity well from the black hole is very strong around that area. So that's the gist of it. It sounds complicated. It's extremely easy. It's extremely easy. You do the right things in the right order. Now, because I'm going to pug it, I have no idea how this next run is going to go that I'm going to record here, but I hope it goes well. Um, and if people do the right things, it can go well. So far, I've had two successful pugs, so I guess I'm due for one that's a failure, <laughs> but you never know what you're going to get in a pug. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're the worst thing in the world. So that's how it goes. But the reason why I'm doing it is just because that's how you guys would start out when you're very first doing these STFs, just like me, is you would want to pug it. You would want to start doing it, you know, on normal so you can just figure out how to do the STFs before you go do the advanced or elite versions of them. You know what I mean? So that's how I'm going to do it here. Uh, and then I'll do another video on the Zenkethi front. That'll be a separate video. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and get one queued up. And uh, when it pops, I will restart the video and uh, we'll record it and see what happens. Stand by. Okay, everybody, I got one that's popping here. This is, of course, Gravity Kills Normal in a Pug. By the way, I'm playing on the Doctor. This is my primary science career character. I am flying a temporal, a temporal science ship. This is the 26th century science ship. So hopefully, uh, because this is a pug, hopefully people will play well. I'm going to go to my offensive configuration because that gives me a lot of maneuverability off the temporal powers. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with weapon power starting off because there's a picket line we have to take out but after that then i am going to switch over like i said to speed engine power because that's going to be important in helping me get those particles across but i'll show you guys how that works hopefully this goes well um if people don't play well i'll try to help them along uh i have some advice i can part <laughs> Okay, now we're going to go to speed. Now it's about getting these particles here. And now we want to drag these particles to the Jupiter, which is over here. And then we want to deliver them. And there's our bar on that. We just wait till that fills up. And when that fills up, the Jupiter will fire. But this is where people get into a lot of trouble, is they want to fight these group of ships. And that's not what you want to do. <laughs> you want to collect the particles and get your butt over to the Jupiter. And this is where evasive maneuver comes in handy, or a lot of engine power speed. All of that is important. Now the ships fight, uh, fighting the Jupiter, you can take those out. And you do want to take those out. Deliver particle, and there we go. Halfway filled already. Halfway filled. Collect particle. stuck on everything and then move along. And like I said, these ships you can attack and you probably want to have somebody here, you know, protecting the ship. Because the whole strength here is one of the optionals. Protect the USS Jupiter optional. Now as you get closer to the black hole, it starts pulling you in. 
and the slower you maneuver, the closer you are to it. So that's why, like, evasive maneuvers really comes in handy right there around the station. Okay, we're about to deliver all that the Jupiter needs. We've collected enough hot particles to power the disruption weapon. Shield towers can be facility alpha. Destroy us gravitic anchors. So now we destroy the gravitic anchors. See these things right here? Gravitic anchors? Which everybody's got a good grasp on. And there it goes. The station will now fall into the black hole. That's all you have to do. Rinse and repeat. The station has fallen into the black hole. Move on to the next one. Now it's time for the next one. You just have to do this two more times. I like to use gravity well not to fight the ships, but to move them out of the way. If I use gravity well to do that, what ends up happening is it kind of pulls them away from an area. Then I can do what I need to do by getting the particle here. Where's the Jupiter at? There it is. There we go. Got one. Got one particle, need many more. Again, I put my engines back on speed for this part of it. And I'm just pretty much ignoring the ships because of this part. It's just all about these particles here. Now see how slow I'm moving when I'm around the station? Because I'm being dragged in. So anything that can buff engine power here or speed is going to really help. And deliver particle. And go back and do it again. Again, I will sometimes use gravity well just to pull the ships away from me. Look at us, we've all got particles. This team is doing very good. This is a very good run so far. I'm very impressed. That is good news. Sometimes, again, these things can be terrible, but... Sometimes they can be good, too. A couple more should do it. And see, they're actively healing the Jupiter. That's also something you want to do. Pulse strength is part of the optional. Yeah, we're doing very good. We should have it here with these next two, maybe. Okay, now we can... Take out the anchors. Target anchor. And there it goes, into the black hole. There we go. 
fallen into the black hole. We just have Move one on more to go. To one. one more to go. Again, I'm just using the gravity well to pull them away. You don't really want to use it to fight because the cruisers and stuff will buff the other ships. Let me get a particle. Right shield failing. And uh, get out of there. There we go, delivered the first particle, and we'll just keep doing that. Um, also, I guess defense would be very good here as well, so you can take a lot of fire damage. Or a lot of ships firing on you. See, I'm not moving very fast, even though I'm on speed near that black hole. Four shields failing. Rear shield oh, crap. failing. Almost got too close to the black hole right there. Check that out. Oh man, that was bad. Do I keep my particle if I warp out? I bet not. Nope, don't get to keep your particle if you have to warp out. Darn it. Yeah, that's the danger of getting too close to the black hole right there. I was sucked in and I couldn't help it. Well, these particles are really close to the black hole. Without evasive maneuvers, you won't escape. Shoot. Dang it. Yeah, that's not good. Why are these so close to the black hole? Crap. <laughs> I blew up. I blew up as I was escaping. Well, that worked well. Well, that shows you the dangers of the black hole, anyway. But, I'm trying to grab these particles, but there are not any that are very close. Here's one that's close. There we go. Got one, okay. Let's go back in. Again, that's just to pull them all away. So I can go over here and grab me a particle. These are so close to the black hole. I'm not happy with this. Yep, not gonna make it. Well, that turned bad and ugly pretty fast. Here we go, we got some more that are closer now. One more should do it. One more should do it. That one right there. And the hole is a bit down. We've collected enough hawking particles. 
to power the disruption weapons. Shields down to the Zinkezi facility gamma. Kick up the Shemitic entrance. And there it goes. Okay, so that's all three stations. As in Kethi Dreadnought. Now we have the Dreadnought. So now we want to do pretty much what I said before, frigates, cruisers, and then battleships. Don't just start attacking the battleships because that will not end well. And we lost somebody here. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target shield has failed. Then battleship. And then dreadnought. And then you're complete. So there you go. Um, whew. That's how you do that STF. It's actually pretty simple as long as you follow the steps correctly. Um, big thing is just ignore the big groups of battleships. And it's all about getting those particles to the Jupiter. So engine speed helps a lot. Get those particles as quickly as you can to the Jupiter and then it takes out the shields, you take out the grav anchors and the thing goes bye bye. Rinse and repeat three times and you've got the stations done and that's the bulk of it. Then you're just left with the dreadnought group at the end. And again, that's pretty simple too. As you just saw, as long as you take out those cruisers first and then the battleships and then the dreadnought, it works out really well. Uh, the only thing you might want to keep an eye on is the Jupiter's whole strength because you get more marks if you can keep that up. And it's probably like required on Elite or something like that. So you will want to practice protecting the Jupiter. Um, having somebody stay around the Jupiter in a ship to uh, you know take care of that, that mob would probably help quite a bit. In addition, uh, there are uh, schemes that people are coming up with or sets of powers that will help in these huge mobs of ships. And people have been posting in the DPS channels, for example, some ideas on different types of power combinations that really help with these large mobs that the Zinkethi have in these STFs. Um, I can't recall them all right now, I, don't, I haven't looked at all of them, and I haven't tried them all myself, but in the future, if I come across any combos that work really well, I will let you guys know. Now, typically, you don't want to use Gravity Well, because that just helps buff the 
um, the other ships, like the, um, the battleships and stuff from the cruisers. Um, however, I have found Gravity Well can be useful if you have a very powerful Gravity Well. First of all, it can remove a group of ships or a whole group of ships around you to a certain area. Um, second, it can it can do damage to them, and especially if you've got you know weakened the ships or whatever. So Gravity Well actually can be useful. And there's what happens when you fall into the black hole, everybody. Ship is under attack. So you could see I was fully stopped, but even then the black hole was still pulling me in. So uh, it doesn't really matter where you are in space in this STF, that black hole is going to pull you in. <laughs> it's very powerful. So those are the tactics. That's what I've learned so far. I'm sure there's probably more to it um, and combos of powers that can work really well. But if you've got any ideas, post in the comments your ideas on how you can be very successful in this STF as well. And as you saw, I'm just a science character with a science ship. I mean, not the most highest DPS ship in the world, for sure. But yet, I can be very successful in this STF because this particular STF is not so much about DPS. This STF is more about maneuverability, honestly. It's about getting those particles to the Jupiter... And then just the DP, the only real DPS you need is either to protect the Jupiter or the very, very final battle group. A lot of DPS will help you take out that final battle group. And if you're trying to get it done within the optional time frame, it can help with that. But otherwise, defensibility, you need, you need a very, very, very defensible ship, um, a tankable ship, and a maneuverable ship, a very tanky ship. But even in this science ship, which isn't a very tanky ship to begin with, I mean, we're talking a temporal science vessel. It is a very tiny ship. It does not have a very high hull strength. But yet, with all the powers I have, the temporal powers I have, all the buffs I have, the specialization skills, by the way, I'm using uh, intelligence officer and pilot. So with both of those enabled um, and all that, my ship is well equipped and it actually can take the damage from the Zenkethi quite well. You noticed I didn't die from the Zenkethi firing on me. I died from the black hole. <laughs> so I can actually take firepower from the Zenkethi quite well in this tiny little ship. So a defensible ship that can maneuver well is really going to help you in this STF, Gravity Kills. Now what do I think of this STF overall? Personally, I feel this STF is too long. Yes, it can be done quickly with a good team, but that's not the point. I think they need to bring it down to, instead of three stations, you just have to take out one station. It should be one station, and then the Dreadnought group, and then you're done. I just feel that it's just a little too long. That's just my opinion, but that's how I feel. Um, I'll talk about the other STF when we tackle it, but yeah, I think this one is just a little bit too long. A little bit too long. If you have a very bad team, low DPS, people blowing up all the time, can't take any damage, you know, uh, don't know what they're doing in the STF, this thing could be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I think that it's a little too long. They've Cryptic has this trend now of making very long and very complicated and complex, not complicated, complex and lengthy STFs and uh, maybe they need to cut it back just a bit I understand I know STFs used to be very long but nowadays people have gotten used to very quick STFs you know get in an ISA do it in two minutes and get out you know people have just gotten very used to doing STFs very quickly and um, I don't think people will have the patience to do very long STFs anymore especially when the player base is not as high as it used to be and there's not a lot of people playing these things. Right now, everybody's playing these STFs because they're brand new. But you guys know what will happen in the future. It'll happen like every other STF that the game has. The old ones, will and people will stop losing interest in them and stop playing them. And then they'll just focus on a small subset of STFs. And they will not go back to those other ones. That happens. It's just a fact of life in this game. And that may eventually happen to these STFs here. And it may happen sooner than later because they're very long. If they were quicker and shorter and easier to do and faster, 
people would pick up them up and do them more. But we'll see how it turns out. But that's just my initial opinion on the STF. I like the idea and the concept of the STF, gra a gravity well, black hole. Dealing with that is very unique, very sci-fi, very Star Trek. So I like that. Very cool theme to the STF. Love the theme, 100% A plus on the theme. Just not happy with the length of the STF. I think it should be cut in half of it. That's my idea. That's my theories anyway. Those are my opinions. So drop a comment and let me know what you guys think of this STF. Uh, now that I played it on normal quite a few times or a few times, I think I'm ready to step it up to advanced and see what happens. <laughs> we'll cross my fingers. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.